Well, first of all, it's really important to understand that all data centers are AC and all data centers are DC. Every data center has AC coming in from the utility mains, and it has DC inside the loads, like the IT devices, such as the, and various kinds of loads. So what is going on here that we're really talking about is where do we do this conversion between AC and DC? It's not a debate about AC versus DC. It's a, it's a question of where do the conversions occur in the data center. Today, they mainly occur inside the IT loads. The IT loads themselves plug into AC. But what we're talking about when we talk about DC data centers is moving at least some of that power path upstream so that more of the data center is DC and a little less of it is AC powered. To, as we investigate this, what we're looking at are issues in the industry such as whether there are differences in efficiency, cost, or reliability associated with the possible conversion of certain parts of the data center uh, or subsections of the data center from AC to DC. Another thing that we're looking at in the industry are concerns with safety. Naturally, issues like arc flash, human safety, electromigration, electromigration, which is the chemical movement of materials that are driven by energy, which tends to be more of a problem with DC, and certainly compliance with the various kinds of regulations. And, of course, along with all this, we would need the development of DC standards before we could seriously implement DC within data centers. And what we've learned from these investigations and, and this work that's been going on the last few years is that AC and DC are really a lot closer in most char uh, characteristics than was previously thought. And I think the result of that is that we'll see DC in some data centers, especially in some unique specialized types of data centers, but there's not really a huge compelling driving advantage. So adoption will be slow and it'll really be limited to a niche for a long time. Well, historically, there's been a lot of confusion about DC because there's so many different potential standards for how we could deliver DC into a data center. And historically, we saw 48 volts DC as a telecom standard, but pretty much that is not what people are talking about when they're talking about a DC standard for data centers. What we're, and the reason is, is because 48 volts DC at the power densities that we use in a data center requires so much copper uh, because of the high currents associated with the low voltage that it's very, very expensive. And the result is that the DC standard that's been developed and is probably going to be the standard for the next uh, decade at least is 380 volts DC, which is often typically mixed with unprotected AC as a second path in what's called a tier three type of arrangement. So again, what we would see is a situation where we might have AC coming into a building, part of it goes to a UPS that takes in AC and puts out DC, that that UPS provides power to one side of the IT load, and the raw AC power from the utility line comes in and supplies another path. This is the most common approach that has been used in those data centers uh, that are currently described in the industry as DC. On the AC side, we also st see a pretty clear standard emerging, which is already the international standard uh, for AC power distribution, which is called 400 slash 230 volts AC. Uh, and What's interesting about that as a standard is it historically was only a standard outside of North America and Japan, but we believe that it, it is the appropriate standard for all data centers, even those data centers located in North America, particularly because the distribution of 120 volts AC, which was historically done in North America, is inefficient and uses a lot more copper. So we fully anticipate the elimination of 120 and 208 from data centers in North America and 100, 200 from elimination of data centers in Japan. And those are really the two competing standards. On the one hand, we have the AC at 400, 230 and the DC at 380 volts.
Well, what's interesting is both of the competing systems, when used in their most efficient potential way of being deployed, can achieve around 98% efficiency in a tier three data center approach. Both the AC path system and the DC path system, both achieving around 98% efficient. That's pretty impressive, particularly when we compare it to the history of data centers where we had data centers that might be as low as 85, even 80% efficient on the power path side. But today, using modern eco mode UPSs, the AC system can actually even be more efficient than a DC system because the AC UPS, when used in eco mode, can achieve 98.5 to 99%. And since in a tier three system, only half of the power goes through that device and half goes direct, 98.5% becomes more like 99.4% as a overall system efficiency from the UPS standpoint. When combined with a few other transformers and so on, you see we're back down still in the 98% kind of range. Pretty hard to beat that by any significant uh, measure b using an alternative approach. And what's interesting about this is there's been a lot of work done on quantification, even tests and modeling of this, and we've issued a number of white papers on this subject, and so has the Green Grid. And they substantially, uh, and we're in substantial agreement with those findings. Well, naturally, if the efficiencies are about equivalent, it's going to be important to understand whether there's a difference in reliability of these two types of systems. And although there's not a lot of field experience with the DC type systems, we can pretty much calculate in advance that the systems are going to have very similar or nearly identical reliability. The DC system, on the one hand, has a slight advantage because there's no power conversion stage from the battery. The battery is on the output bus, and that stage is avoided along with any potential uh, defects or quality problems associated with that path. That's a benefit for the DC system. The AC system, on the other hand, has a slight advantage because it has the ability to be bypassed during faults or service. For example, as we are well aware, most UPS systems have both a static, AC UPS systems have a static and a maintenance bypass. So when they either are maintained or if they experience some kind of fault, they, it, the load can be transferred around them back to the AC source. And that function of a bypass uh, improves the availability of the AC system considerably. But a DC system cannot have that option because the output DC is incompatible with the input AC, so no bypass is possible. So overall, the reliability of both systems is really dominated by devices like batteries and circuit breakers, which have the same reliability whether used in an AC or DC system and are present in both. For example, it doesn't, if I've got an AC UPS or a DC UPS, they both have the same battery. And if the battery is dominating the reliability of the system, it really doesn't matter whether it's AC or DC. Well, the AC system and DC system are remarkably similar in cost. Wires, batteries, circuit breakers, are basically the same whether they're AC or DC. The DC UPS on one hand has an extra stage called a galvanic isolation stage that adds significant cost to the system. But the AC UPS has a, a multi-phase power conversion stage and bypass components that do add cost. Overall, in the long run, if there were a lot of DC systems available in the market, we think DC UPS could be 5 to 10% cheaper as a device uh, if made in sufficient volume. Remember, of course, that that's just a UPS component. And as far as impacting the overall data center, you probably have to divide that by about a factor of 5 or 10 to get to a total data center cost. So we're really talking about maybe like a 1% kind of a number for a difference in total cost. Well, as we see it, 
DC has a significant barrier to overcome because AC distribution is ubiquitous in data centers. And during any transition period, there's a difficulty associated with potentially having to try and make a data center that does AC and DC at the same time. We believe that data centers that use DC will avoid this problem by putting any DC functions down in a container or pod level uh, near the IT systems in the data center and primarily uh, deploying AC distribution at the facility level and only doing DC conversion down near clusters of racks or, for example, in an IT type container. And we think that that will be the primary mode that that these systems are used in, and uh, and maybe even the long and for the short term, and probably even for the long term.